Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast. I'm your host and sometimes referee, Zach Pearson, and today I'm joined by Pika Datmitsu. Turkey Hill Raspberry Tea. Good to drink on a hot summer day. Note, this podcast is not sponsored by Turkey Hill. <laughs> well, uh, that's definitely one of your more unique intros. And of course, the ever-lovely, the ever-popular, the returning phoenix that rises from the ashes, Kyler that Telford. What's good, y'all? Back in the building, Mr. Telford in the mix, out here, just because I can be. All right. Well, y'all know who I am, Friendly Neighborhood Referee. Already been there, done that. Let's get into our topics today, because today may be one of our more serious podcasts, whatever you call what the fuck we do serious. But it's more on the lines of expect some straightforward answers, which I know is rare, according to people that piss and moan about me not giving straight answers, but everyone else does. Also, sometimes I just do it to piss you guys off. Y'all realize that, right? Not you on the podcast, but the people who actually listen to this shit. Sometimes I'm doing it just to piss you off because you can't say be more decisive in a nice way. So fuck you. Topic one. The PlayStation Vita successor rumor. Do you think it's real or fake? And will it be at E3? Why or why not? Mr. Pikamitsu. Mm, They could come out with it. But I really don't see why. I mean, as far as I know, the only thing the PS Vita is good for right now is being a little remote for your PS4 when you're away from it. Yeah. Damn, that was really far away. But I just really don't think it would be a good idea for them to do that. They should focus on other things. Don't focus on making another portable console son of a bitch don't focus on making another portable console because your last one bombed you need to make some good hype before you make another portable console otherwise you're just gonna bomb out again and you may not recover so take your time take your sweet time and do it right but I don't think you should be seeing this from them this year and you, Mr. Telford? Well, first of all, to comment on his comment about, you know, it being good for nothing but another controller, that's why you have actual controllers, because you don't need the shit. It's an unneeded system, in my opinion. And whether we're going to re-up it or not. Uh, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Oh shit. I said, oh shit. I did, I did not interrupt I, you. I said, I, did not inter- I was being nice. Now, uh, yeah, because nah, you didn't have nope, to correct me not. for anything. Now, I'm I correcting didn't correct you. you. No, I'm voicing my opinion like you voiced yours. No, you, you, you just voiced my opinion wrong. I no. said portable controller because you can actually take your Vita and control your PS4 away from your house with certain things. Just, the regular controller cannot do that. PS Vita can't. Get your facts right. Continue. Huh? 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 It's over? No. Oh. Wow. Oh. I might actually yeah. have to be a referee on this episode. That's both frightening oh. and hilarious. I wasn't expecting a baby face over here to be upset about my opinion. Goddamn liberals in the chat. Anywho. You're a black conservative. Saying, You're a dying breed. Literally. Oh, yeah, I'm dying. Dying every fucking minute. Anyways, I'm not a big fan of the system, obviously. Couldn't care less if they come out with a reboot. First one didn't do a worth a fucking flip. Next one probably won't be any better. They should probably just focus on what they have going right and just cut their losses on what they've done wrong. Instead of trying to put out more half-assed bullshit. With high intentions, but zero effort. actual effort. And that's my piece. So go fuck yourself. All right. I really ain't got much different shit to say. However, I will say this. 
I don't think the rumor's fake. Let me finish before you start throwing your pitchforks. But the reasoning is because Sony, or rather the PlayStation brand's favorite two things to do are to try to steal Nintendo's thunder and put Nintendo in the ground. There may be people who at the company genuinely give a shit and don't want bad things to happen to Nintendo. But since its early days in upper management, quite literally, there has been a bunch of cases where Sony basically looks like or was blatantly trying to shit on Nintendo. Okay? Now, that being said, they probably just realized that the handheld market is a little bit more uh, frightening than they realized. The Vita does do well in Japan, but Japan does not make up even half of the video gaming market. And I'm not including PC. I'm saying specifically for video games, Japan doesn't even include half the market. So a successful uh, system in one country doesn't necessarily mean that it's successful. And as you all may or may not remember, because Sony has a long outstanding history of doing this, when they make shit that does not succeed, they don't tell people that they're canceling it. They just slowly let it die a horrible, miserable death and don't tell anybody about it until you call up customer service one day. And just tell them, hey, what's wrong with my device? Oh, sorry, we don't give a shit. We don't give a fuck about that device no more. I don't think we're going to actually see a new Vita or a successor, in my opinion, at least for the next five to six years. That being said, they obviously don't really give that much of a shit about the Vita. But they haven't stopped because it still technically produces money. It just sells a very low amount. So, yeah, I think the rumors are true, but I don't think it's going to happen soon. I... I I kind of agree with upper management in America. Like, if it happens, it might be as as much as a decade from now. All right. Topic number two. Unless y'all two want to battle again. Switch upgrading rumors. Now, those rumors have been around since before the system actually came out. I'll explain a little bit more about that later. And due to vague statements by official employees, we've had more and more of a bit of a feeling of there may be things coming further down the line that we're not made aware of. But on a personal level, what upgrades or modifications would you produce for your own system if you ran for the Switch if you ran Nintendo? Or... Do you think the family of devices statements were more leaning towards a secondary device? Like, you know, a completely different system that's just not as powerful or more powerful than the Switch. Now, to elaborate more, the reason that shit like this has been circulating since before its inception is because the current president, Mr. Kimishima, because I don't know his first name and his second name sounds cool. Mr. Kimishima has stated that the Switch would be the start of a family of devices. They plan on making a family of devices, which is fucking vague as shit. That's where this whole thing started from. But now we've gotten more, uh, for lack of a better term, heavier rumors due to Nintendo making certain statements about accessories and not being sure if they want to make or how to make a 3DS successor to the Nintendo uh, to the Nintendo 3DS. Because for all intents and purposes, a lot of people thought that the successor was the Switch because it's, well, it's the next console and it just happens to be portable too. So theoretically, would you need to make another portable system that's portable only? A question that is very expensive in a good way and a bad way, mind you. Now, I'm going to go first. For me, personally, I think it's not a secondary system. And I think they might be or have thought about trying to make what I would make if I was running Nintendo. Basically, a super dock or a premium version of the dock. And I don't mean as far as functionality and features. I mean as far as horsepower. Because this system just got here. And as we all know, like with the transition between HD or 720, 1080 and all that other shit, resolution states become normal after a certain amount of time. Right now, it's technically still 480. But 
if you get into any type of media or entertainment concept, a lot of stuff will start at 720. And that's only going to increase over the next five to six years. We already have an 8K TV. And, it's, and the price on it is expected to depreciate at least 15% over the course of the next uh, 72 months. Oh, not 72 months. Uh, the next 36 months. Now, I think this premium dock will be the equivalent of a PSP Pro or Xbox Scorpio, but again, also be cheaper because it doesn't come with the system or they might make a version that does come with the system. And the only reason I think that is because one of the things that you're going to get a lot of people who like to complain about modern abilities on consoles, and to be honest, there's nothing wrong with that, is that the Switch is severely lacking in ports. Uh, Y'all can't see it because of the commercials and how they do shit, but I have the system, so let me tell you right now. It's powerful. Yes, it takes USB Type-C, which is forward thinking, because that's going to become extremely popular in the next couple of years. Because keep in mind, USB Type-C can do Ethernet, HDMI, and fucking audio and still charge shit up. That's insane to think about. But at the same time, there's like one Type-C port on the back of this thing, one HDMI port, one USB port. And not even the Ethernet slot. They want you to get a USB Ethernet connector. Mind you, it saves them money on making the system, which can bring the price down. It's a basic feature at this fucking point for almost any device that can link to the Internet that isn't a cell phone or a tablet. So I think we'll get a premium dock that might cost the same amount as the Switch and not come with one or have one that does come with it. And it'll be able to display or output shit in the 4K or it'll upscale easily in the 4K or something in between 1080 and 4K. Anything is really an improvement. Same with the PSP Pro. Uh, more locks, uh, frayable frame, frame rates, FPS, all that good bells and whistle shit. And also the added thing that a lot of people sleep on, HDR or high dynamic range. Which actually gives you the original color presentation that was intended. Well, minus the fact that you're looking at it through a different monitor than the person that created it. That's how I think it's going to be. Or that's what I think they might have meant by that. But the problem is, is that they're testing the waters. They have to see what's going to happen with stuff like the Scorpio, stuff like the PS4 Pro. They're technically successful, but they sell very, very slow. But that's just me. Now, what about you, Pika? Okay. So, a family of new things. Family, I think, generally down to a group of things that are related by some element. Now, in the terms of video game consoles, when you think of family of consoles, the family is usually the name of the company. So, you've got, like your Microsoft family of consoles. You've got your Xboxes. You've got your PlayStation family. You've got your PlayStation 1, 2, 3. No one likes the little midget side cousin portables. <laughs> Damn. Then you've got the Nintendo family. Mm -hmm. But they've completely, like, you know, stepped up their game and not only solidified their place in the home market, but they've become the name in portable gaming. So when Nintendo says family, they could go either way, either developing new things that combine with the home console, which is right now the Switch, or new things that could get attached to the 3DS, which is their current you know, portable console. Now, who has heard of random attachments that could actually be attached to the 3DS via its ports. Any Anybody heard of anything like that? Uh, I remember that being prevalent on, like, the Game Boy. Yeah, like the little... I remember having the little, like, light that you could plug into the little, uh, yeah, like, training have, court. And then port. you could have a fucking printer. That was the weirdest one. What the fuck do I mm -hmm. need to print on a Game Boy? Right, and then the Game Boy camera as well. That that was something. But, um, yeah, it's like... But now, like, you know, cameras built in, you know, to the 3DS, printers... Well, they learned their lesson way back when, so they didn't do that again. 
it's like, what could you attach to a 3DS to make it better? You know, it's like they've almost reached the pinnacle of what they can do with their console. You know, unless they develop some kind of attachment or like release a newer model, another newer model of the 3DS, which could have the ability to do like data instead of like Wi-Fi, like do Wi-Fi plus like data and have like some kind of like be able to go with, you know, AT&T data plans or Verizon data plans or something like that and be able to do that when you want to go out on the road and access wireless stuff. That would be interesting. That would be something that, you know, we didn't think Nintendo would think about, but so you think so you think uh, based on your opinion it's not so much going to be a family of devices. You just think there's going to be a companion piece to the Switch. Yeah, there's going to be some kind of companion, some kind of added, like, attachment to the family, to, to enhance the family. It's not going to be something, like, entirely brand, like, brand new by itself, stand out, hey, look at me. But it's going to be something to help what's already out there. Okay. Well, I know you ain't got one, and I know you don't follow them for whatever fucking reason, uh, but, eh, it's a hypothetical anyway. What's your opinion, Mr. Telford? Uh, let's see. I, as you stated, don't follow it. Um, also, don't care to follow it. I don't see it being a successful system um, in and of itself, therefore adding an entire family to it. I don't see that helping the cause. I see them losing a lot of money out on it. Uh, you do realize it's already outpacing the Wii, right? I don't realize that. I, I don't know my number. I'm just brainstorming. I'm, oh, I'm okay. going. I got you. Uh, that. This is from what I see. Like it, with numbers, yeah, it's probably doing well enough that they're producing more. I just don't see it as, it's not attractive to me. That's what I'm saying. And so, and a family of it coming out doesn't appeal to me either. I would have to see a physical uh, gameplay as in, hey, I need to play this. I need to watch people play this. I need to be in house with it, not just over YouTube videos. I would Um, recommend Breath of the Wild. Before I would be able to, you know, it attracted my attention at all because that's not a console or a honestly an entire network that me and most of my friends even care to be on. So if I was to move away from my system, you know, the Xbox or the PC to go and do this, like you would have to have some hard grass that, you know, attracts me to it. Well, personally, I wouldn't. Yeah, I understand. Personally, I wouldn't even tell you to like, you know, go all in. You, well, I, you, you know us. Me and Coleman been around long enough to see our fair share of shit in the industry. So we know putting your eggs in one basket is never a good idea. I don't care who you think you are. Shit can crumble, and shit has crumbled. Yeah, but that's that's my opinion. I'm not, I'm not big on. Nintendo consoles. I don't think anybody really was until this shit showed up. Like, they dropped the ball hard with the Wii U. Yeah. Uh, Last Nintendo console I was actually excited about was the fucking GameCube. And that's still, in my opinion, their best console they've put out. So, that's what that is. And that's my piece. Yeah, you'd like the Switch, but like like you said and like I know firsthand... You got to get your hands on it. I mean, I was skeptical just because I got burned with the Wii U. But as you may or may not remember, I actually got tasked with working on Nintendo's tech demonstration team in Illinois and got to play it like a whole fucking solid month before everybody else. So I knew going in what I was getting into. And I was like, yep, I'm on board. I already see how this shit going to go. This is going to be fucking insane. I just wish they could keep up with their own demand, but at the same time, that's not a bad place to be in. Um, all right, well, let me, sorry, I had to move my chair. Moving on to topic three. 
Oh shit, I can hear the fucking ice cream man outside. Eh. Fucking oh love, shit. Fucking love Mexican ice cream, bro. They there's like no artificial shit. It's basically a frozen fruit in a popsicle. Hmm. Okay. Run, man, run. Topic three. Cause this shit is so dumb. Sean Layden, a high ranking executive over in a SCEA or SCIA, aka Sony Computer Entertainment of America, stated in Time magazines that a mobile sequel to the Vita is unlikely. Main reasoning being because, well, the Vita didn't hit any markers that it was supposed to, unless you were in Japan. And Jim Ryan, also a high ranking executive, has stated that most gamers don't make use of backwards compatibility and claims he doesn't understand why people want to play old games after he went to a Gran Turismo event for a new game and saw that they still had systems that had Gran Turismo 1 and 2. Yeah, yeah. I want to dig a hole into these motherfuckers' asses, but my opinion may take a very, very long time. And plus, I want to make it a tad bit PG-13 because, well, after all, I technically do sell their merchandise. But... Uh, I'm going to let you go first, Telford. Basically, the questions are, do you think these supposed human beings are right when they say there's damn near no value to uh, backwards compatibility? Yes or no? Why or why not? Uh, compatibility is a huge thing. Thank you. Um, being, in, being a gamer who has grown up with games, um, old enough to know that the older games have amazing quality and you know still young enough to be intrigued by some of the new stuff that they're coming out with <laughs> some um <laughs> yeah uh, definitely uh, quote me on some uh but like there's a lot of games that i wish that i could plug into you know my xbox one and play again from the original xbox you know from even the 360 you know you know just and then other systems as well. It's like, I enjoy playing the old games, the old memories, you know, the, you know, my childhood over again in the gaming yeah, world. sentimental value, basically. It, yeah, exactly, you know, like, you know, getting down with my brothers on, you know, whatever game we decide to come across without having to wait for them to remaster it for the new system. You know, and so, backwards compatibility is a good thing. And they need to keep pushing that to make it more versatile as far as what all you can go back to and not, well, this can, but that can't type shit. And so that's my opinion. Those all are my right, thoughts. Pika. <coughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Here we that's go. Let it come out of his mouth. So. Really? Got him. As, as you were making a mess of your underwear, not but twice, <laughs> just before the stream started. I hope you're wearing white underwear for your Damn. Sake. Damn. Show some you. I don't wear underwear. Yeah. Well, then you just ruined the perfect Why would you admit to some shit hair. like that? I can never he's, unhear that. He's, Zach, he's fallen Zach. and it may be extremely hot where he is. Zach, from here... I know you can count the fucks given right now. Go ahead. I didn't. I didn't no one said anything about fucks that you give. I give a fuck about my mental well-being. I didn't need to know that. Oh, oh I don't. Not in the slightest. But that's neither here nor there. Continue. So yeah, apparently, it's nowhere because you ain't wearing it. Okay. So, as the uh, topic is written out in the chat, the way I see it. Mr. Laden, as I'll call him, says that a mobile sequel to the Vita is unlikely, or unlikely, as you put it, but unlikely. That seems to be the end of his statement as is. So, I think the Vita was a shit. So, <laughs> Miss, Mr. Laden gets off the hook. He's fine. In my opinion, he's made an opinion You're really that close is to your agreeable mind. to mine. So, he's fine. Now, Mr. Ryan, on the other hand, this motherfucker, from a standpoint of most 
common people that play on consoles can go jump into the biggest pile of AIDS-infested shit. Damn. And drown in it. And then the ghost of Harambe just get right in his ass. Really? Dicks out for Harambe. Oh, my God. Dicks out. You, sh- you shouldn't even say that. You ain't wearing drawers. Well, it makes his dick easier to get out. That's the problem. Dick is always out. Anyways. Um, that sounds very illegal. N- mm, depends. Now, as for backwards compatibility itself, you know, I don't make consoles. I don't program consoles. I'm not in the knowledge of what these creators have to do to their hardware in order to enable backwards compatibility for previous disk-based generations. Now, the first line of thought that comes to my mind when they have to figure this stuff out is, okay, nowadays, like back in the days, they wouldn't have the options of, okay, we can just turn all of our older games into, you know, data slash downloads. Oh, and then, haha, you're going to get them again if you want to play them. But nowadays, mm-hmm. they have to consider a balance of time slash cost and think to themselves, okay, if we put in the hardware and the effort and the money, make our hardware backwards compatible with, say, one generation or two generations back, how many people are going to use this uh, function, and then how many people are going to want to go out, go back, grab some of these games that may not have been, you know, backwards compatible on the last generation console, but they are this one, so we can go back and get the games that we love to play when we were younger. We get more sales out of them, whether they be new or stores, what have you. On the flip side of things, how much time and effort would it take for them to hunt and pick some of the most popular older games on these previous generations, turn them digital, and then make sure they work and set them at a price point which is good enough to bring those people back in and then make them get the game either again if they have this cons the disc with them or you know just get it you know for the first time take notes nintendo because your pricing on virtual console shit is always garbage yeah they i feel that they always have to make that choice of time like the balance of time and cost and they i would hope that they would take that in mind and then figure out whether or not backwards compatibility is worth it to me i always think nostalgia will be a thing nostalgia will always be worth it and having backwards compatibility in your consoles would be a huge plus So you can bring in some of the older generation as well as some of the current. And it doesn't make, you know, your discs obsolete if you decide to get rid of your older console, a.k.a. trading up to the newer one. And for Mr. Ryan to say that it's just... We just don't make use of backwards compatibility. Which we we don't want to bullshit. Yes, and we don't want to play old games, which is also bullshit, because I just beat Star Ocean till the end of time for the PS4. Did you get all the characters? Well, you can only have up to eight characters in your party. No, you can get everybody. Nope. That's right. You can get everybody. I did it. You You have choices that you can make as far as who you get in your party when you're going through. And then there's uh, post-game stuff, but... No, that's no you can get like them before the game thing. is over. That's another topic for another time. Okay. But, thing is, 
that game is extremely old. But I, that was that's my still my favorite Star Ocean game to this day. And I loved the crap out of it way back when I was playing it on the PS2. Mm-hmm. And that's why I decided to get it. They put it at a good price point. They put it at twenty dollars because, if I'm not mistaken, it was a it was either a two disc or a three disc game back two. on the PS2. Two, two disc game. And okay. we started with the director's cut version. We never got the original. Mm-hmm. So, By the yeah, way, actually, uh, I think that's the director's cut they have up there. Were you able to get Mirage on your party? Yeah, Mirage automatically comes in the party. I think director's like maybe cut. a bit. Like when you first get end. into space, when you first get in space, yeah. But it's director's cut, yeah, because she wasn't even playable on the original game in Japan. We never got the original. That's why I was hesitant on buying it. But I'm glad you told me that. But yeah, um. And I'm wishing that they would make a digital version of Star Ocean The Last Hope. Why? Because God, even why? though it, star- it started as the downfall of the Star Ocean series, it's the darkest there, were time still some, there were still some good things to the game. The combat was still nice. There were some things added in that made the combat better. Um, the item creation system, pluses and minuses, but it was still enjoyable enough to the point where you wanted to go out and make the items. You know, the story with Edge Lord Maverick, just, um, it was, eh. But I really did like that uh, ditzy angel. She has a special place in my heart. And by heart, I mean my penis. Yeah, yeah, but, I saw that coming. Um, yeah, I still do want to play it because I really did enjoy it. So I, I really hope that they don't listen to Jim Ryan and they instead listen to the general public. And I believe the general public will say backwards compatibility is a good thing. You should keep doing. Okay, well, I have to be careful because, you know, not so much jobs may be on the line as it is uh, benefits may be on the line, although I doubt it'll even get to that motherfucker's ears. Um, I feel like everyone is lying. And I feel like they know damn well it's important or that there's money in it. You know how? PlayStation Now. What is that? Everything you used to fucking play on a rental service. They put in their own fucking blockbuster into the goddamn PlayStation 4. They wouldn't have bought Gaikai. By the way, I really hope I said that name right because I still can't get a confirmation on if it's Gaikai or Gay Kai or Gay Guy, whatever. And they didn't do shit with that company for years. Well, let me rephrase that. They didn't do shit that we were told about with that company for years and then all of a sudden, boom. PlayStation now happens. They have to know that we know that they're lying. And I'm confident in saying that statement for the simple fact that why does PlayStation now exist if you think that backwards compatibility is not important to old players? Sony, we haven't seen, or at least I haven't seen, maybe you might be able to Google it, uh, Pika, if you can pull it up, but I have not been able to see or pull up how much developers get off of their games being played on the PlayStation rental service at all. I haven't even seen a mention of it anywhere on the internet. So, one, let's keep in mind, the PlayStation Network grossed four goddamn billion last on their last fiscal year. Four goddamn billion. Let me say that again, because I like saying it. Four goddamn billion. Now, is with, that with just uh, game purchases or game purchases plus, like, the subscription? No, it's services? not even a purchase. It's, the, it's it's rental. You don't own the game. You rent them. Right. But I'm saying you said it was making $4 billion. You're, like, you're saying PlayStation making $4 billion. Just yeah, the, the virtual service? council. The virtual council by itself makes oh, $4 billion. Okay. That is the equivalent of the pretty much the same amount of money that Destiny made by itself. $4 billion. So, to be honest... They on some bullshit of the highest order. However, 
it could be a company mandate from Japan to downplay the importance of virtual council or to try to make it seem trivial. We don't know. We can't read minds. And at best, I can only find out if I would have a private conversation with them. Like I found out the confirmation on the Marvel vs. Capcom 4 roster leak. I didn't believe none of this shit. Yeah, there were people leaking and then there were people giving false information to leak. My concern was talking to people who work on it. Literally people who worked on it, not someone who knows someone who works at the company that's working on it, meaning someone who actually is working on the development of it. And that's what happened for me. I got three separate confirmations from people who are actually on the development team, either in post-production shit like voice acting or directly involved like animation, programming, that type of shit. So that's the only reason I even trust that MVC4 roster leak, or at least the one that I have. Now... I can't get into who those connections are, obviously, because I ain't no snitch. I'm the wrong skin tone for that shit. But I feel like they're lying on purpose, bottom line. Because I don't know how much the PlayStation now makes by itself. But we all know that I think it's like one in five or about maybe two in ten virtual council uploads when they're not DLC and they're just full on games is old shit or shit we played on a previous console. And they'll even make new trailers, new YouTube advertisements, all that shit for it. Hell, the Saints Row 3, Saints Row even played into the idea of the presidential shit still. They call it the re-election edition. They took everything they made on the PlayStation 3, including the standalone Johnny Gat shit, put it all into one package, DLC included. You can't tell me you don't think it's important when, first off, if it wasn't important, why do you even allow third parties to upload old ass games on your fucking virtual console then? You're lying out of your ass. You're fucking lying. Now, the other guy, uh, James Comey, I think it was, or James, whatever his name was, not Comey, I'm thinking about the federal shit, but uh, Sean, whatever it was, the dude who said that, he didn't understand Mr. why. Mr. Wow. People who didn't understand uh, why others were playing Gran Turismo old games when they had the new game in front of them. I just genuinely think that that man is an idiot. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Thank you for bringing that up. Whoever shit on the first Gran Turismo can eat the largest of dicks. I love the first Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo 1 or Gran Turismo or just, you know... Certain franchises are sacred. Now, I don't. I hate using that term because it sounds almost religious, and I don't hate religions, but I don't like comparing video games to religion. But there are certain things you can't talk about without somebody possibly getting up in your ass or you losing a tremendous amount of respect. I've seen two people in my entire life try to talk shit about Chrono Trigger. Two people. Now, notice I use the word try in that sentence. You know why? Because when they tried it, they got put in the metaphorical ground. Because they looked stupid. They looked like they were, they were ignorant of their own hobby. Or in this case, this man looks ignorant of his own job. And ignorant is a special type of stupid. Ignorant is the willful blocking of information. Mm -hmm. So this man, much like literally every conservative I will probably ever meet in my life didn't decide to take facts but decided to introduce alternative facts I'm gonna start using alternative facts at random just to just to spice shit up because I like how people just say something is true with no backing and then just decide it's true no I could have sworn I tell a lie fucking works fucking he decided to say that there was no true value to old games. I'm like, motherfucker, most people who work in the industry work in the industry because of old games. They didn't just wake up one day and say, man, this new game that's coming out and I pre-ordered that I've only played or had in my life for less than a whole fucking day is going to make me want to change my entire life career, go to college or learn whatever skills I can so I can work in the industry. No, it's fucking old games or old movies. That's it. And that man was being an ignoramus. I don't have any special little things to say behind it. No extremely disturbing insults. He was being ignorant, and I believe it was on purpose. Because unless they can go right now and turn off PlayStation Now, never bring it back, and remove all virtual console 
Pass games from the PlayStation Store on both the 3 and the 4? I know for a fact this man is lying. And you can all quote me on that. General manager from some lowly retailer they're never going to fucking acknowledge directly is calling out these people on being ignorant on purpose. So yeah, for on a very rare occasion, and I do mean once in a blue moon, everybody comes together on this podcast and has actual opinions, no vague shit required. And to be honest, I'm sad it had, we had to come to come to it over circumstances like this. But I'm not going to dwell on it too much because, well, one, I know he was a fucking liar. And two, I want to talk about some cool stuff. All right, so this is our... Excuse me, I know my voice is sounding weird over the mic. I'm trying to put something heavy down. Okay. I know that we all are aware of what's coming up, which is E3 2017. And of course, uh, we have a few members that are actually going there in person for the entirety of the event. Which, contrary to popular belief, is not just uh, a two-day weekend or three-day weekend. In fact, this E3 technically starts on Monday, but there are press events uh, Saturday and Sunday. So, depending on how you look at it, nine days. And we do have some members of our team that are going down there. And I wish them the best luck and I hope they have fun and get as many of the autographs as they think they can nab for me. But I also want to bring up my personal favorite section, which is the what you looking at or what you're playing, where we talk about games that we know people aren't looking at or paying attention to, and we bring up why they should. I'm going to make mine short. People, now is a good time to get back into Dungeon Fighter Online, or for the Koreans, Dungeon and Fighter. If you like Ninja Turtles growing up, the old shit, not that new garbage, Streets of Rage, Final Fight, Double Dragons, Original Ninja Gaiden, Original Shinobi. This is one of those sections. Why am I echoing? Okay. This is one of those games that will carve up the itch or scratch the itch of a particular section of your heart. Because let's be honest, games like that in this day and age are so rare and far between that everyone knows when they come out because, well, everyone got it. We really only got Devil May Cry and shit, we don't know what's going on with Devil May Cry. We got Bayonetta and we fucking got Ninja Gaiden. That's pretty much it. We got those three. And again, they come out so sparsely that everyone knows when they release. But let me take it back to the old school for a second. I've often wondered what would have happened if those genres... Beloved genres that never even really fell out of popularity, just companies stopped making them one day, stayed popular outside of Japan. What would a 2D co-op action RPG look like in this day and age in 2D or just in general? Because, you know, they really don't fucking do it. And that question got answered with Dungeon Fighter. That game was so underrated that the original creators didn't even think that the game was going to take off. They had to shut it down just to make new servers because they were getting such an influx of people back when Dungeon Fighter came out originally in 2002, I believe. And it's crossed many a shoreline and it's made its way to America in multiple iterations. What is that beeping noise? And I'm actually happy for them. I genuinely am happy for them and how they went about Figuring out how to blend that perfect action and shit. They got classes that are both unique and cliche. And I use the term cliche in a positive way in this case. Because they take the cliches and they mess with them until they can do or come out looking original or still fun to play. And it's completely playable with a pad. If you guys can get a hold of it because it's free. It's available on Steam. But you could also download it independently, you know, in case Steam give you some shit, which can happen. Remember, they don't give out refunds unless the country that they have service in demands they do it, which is a dick move. But what can you do? All right, Telford, what about you? You playing anything besides League? Hello? 
Hello? Hi. 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 Sorry, in the middle of a dungeon on a dungeon fighter right now. So that's why it took me a minute to unmute my mic. Um, but am I playing anything other than League at the moment? No. But from what I've read on IGN, uh, Gearbox is possibly coming out with a Borderlands 3. Oh, dude, that's and pretty much a done deal. They just cocked you at this point. For people who don't know, that's like my favorite series of games ever. You got pre-sequel? So, oh, hell yeah. Might need your help in that later. We'll talk later. Uh, so, I am definitely looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. and Anything you want to see in particular at E3? Uh, mainly just solidify, you know, what that's going to come out like. That's about the only game that I care about. That's, I mean, that kind of takes all focus when another one comes out. Definitely takes uh, precedence over any other game in my life. And yeah, so at the moment, uh, Zach has told me about this dungeon fighter game, and I've been playing it since like two o'clock in the fucking morning, and here I am still playing. So. You're welcome. Thanks, Jackass. No so problem, donkey. That's it for me. All right, what about you, Pika? All right, so let's switch it from what are you playing to what are you watching. Just say Overwatch. Uh, you know you're playing Overwatch. Well, since you brought that up, I was completing my placement matches for Season 5. I had two more to play this morning, and I was 4-4 four and four before I went in. Then I got grouped up with two of the biggest groups of retards ever, and I ended up 4-6. You should have just left the group. No, someone else did. Each game. So, I wasn't going to be a bitch and leave. I fought it out. And I really hope that Jeff Kaplan, the he is working on a punishment system for people who leave uh, competitive matches in ways of a ban, whether it's a ban of a certain length of time for the current season, which could possibly be upgraded to a ban for the entire current season to fuck you, you're not playing competitive ever again. Which is a good punishment because seriously, fuck leavers. You can, your rating can get so fucked by just one match, it's not even funny. But anyways, um, well, as for I what I just want to clarify real quick, when I said leave, I didn't mean abandon the party mid-match. I meant after the initial match ends, just fucking get the fuck out of there. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Um, now, as for what I'm watching, um, I am going to be keeping my eye on E3. As you said, stuff like doesn't really kick off till Monday, but the conferences, for the most part, are going to be kicking off tomorrow yeah and, i don't give a shit about uh, ea's conference i'm gonna just say that right now yeah ea's conference is going on right now huh implying ea but tomorrow there are two that i actually want to keep my eye on microsoft and bethesda although bethesda's is going to be at fucking midnight and i'm like why different time zone yeah i know 9 p.m in their time zone california time zone lol california but there's those two I'm going to be keeping an eye on. And then on Monday, Ubisoft, eh. I kind of feel bad for Sony, though, because their conference is going up at 9 p.m. my time. And not only am I going to be working at that point in time, that's also when Game 5 of the NBA Finals starts. So either people are going to be watching their computers and watching the game in the background or a combination of the two. Or if they can't handle the mental capacity, they're really, they're either going to be watching one or the other. So something's going to suffer. Uh, bro, you can pause E3. Keep oh yeah, it's a computer. Yeah, but you got to remember there are people that are stupid enough that to realize that they are they they can't fathom the idea of pausing it. <laughs> there are people <laughs> like that true. out there. That is fucking true. And then, of course, the big granddaddy, Nintendo, on Tuesday. 
at noon, my time. So, of course, I'll be keeping an eye on that as well. I'll be taking a look at what Switch stuff they may Ooh. have coming up. So, it'll be interesting as we see. Oh, yeah. I've heard good stuff about the ARMS, uh, what is it, beta? Well, not even beta. Oh, yeah. The um, ARMS yeah. test that came out. Me and Hill was all up on that shit. We was boxing like a motherfucker. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fun to see what comes of this. I can't wait to see the YouTube videos or and Twitch streams of people playing it. That's going to be some fun times. I'm, I'm waiting on somebody to accidentally punch their like web camera or TV or some shit. You know that's going to uh, happen. You know they're going to be so far freaking away. It's not that they're going to punch the thing. It's going to be one ignorant person say, I don't need to put the wrist straps on for this. Controller's going to fly right out of the hand and crack something. Which is why the wrist straps even exist, because stupid people don't seem to realize if you put your hand on a slippery, tiny object, it's probably going to potentially wiggle when you move around. But, you know, fuck me, I got common sense. It's, it's, it's a sad world we live in sometimes. Sometimes, he says. Eh, I, I get to stay away from most of it, but I do run into it every now and then. So, luckily for me, it stays at sometimes. Now, um, playing... Like I said, I just finished up Star Ocean. I'm going to put a little bit of a hold on the post-game stuff. Uh, I, re I really want to look into getting a uh, player underground battle, whatever, what the fuck it's called. Um, because seriously, 100 people, one life, and you, you fucking fight like your life depends on it. Concept is just absolutely amazing. Um, so I'm going to try to get my hands on that one way or another. Other than that, um, the playing list is not that big. Oh yeah, that's what I got going. Wow, okay, so. Wait, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, one more note. Oh, there's I'm gonna be two, go ahead. Uh, excuse you, I'm talking. Yeah, okay, yeah. good, stay, stay silent, I like it. I like him better this way. Watch it. I'm going to get his ass in PvP. You know, he, he keeps talking shit, but I ain't seen no product. So. You, 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 I keep talking shit. Oh, that's hilarious. I keep... Okay, go ahead. Anywho, uh, I have recently been uh, shown a potential game that m might eventually come out. It's a survival-based game that is kind of like... Uh, I don't even know what you talking about. Fortnite. Now. Actually, I'm, honestly, uh, this video I was tagged on Facebook about a survival game that you can have. Yeah, uh, don't know much about it. Looks really, really mm -hmm. fucking cool. One that I would love to play. Yeah, I tagged you in it. It helps if you have a name for it. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, it would help if I had a name, but I don't. I just know it's a survival game. That is going to be really cool. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really right vague. Now. That is really vague. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, you will be proud of that. I interrupted everything just for that. Anyways, all right. Uh, I guess you can call this breaking news, but without the weird noises. Okay, so... I'm just going to assume everybody is raising their power levels when I say, Do you like Dragon Ball? Mm -hmm. So, I got some good news for y'all. Well, good news depending on your understanding of quality fighting games. There appears to be a leak that is confirmed to be true of a new Dragon Ball fighting game. And I know what you're thinking. Well, duh. They're not going to stop until they can probably perfectly emulate exactly what happens in the show. And, hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. Mario, get a new game. Why you want to be mad when Dragon Ball get a new game? My thing is... It's who's making it. There's a new Dragon Ball game being made by the people that made fucking Guilty Gear. And it's a 3D fighting game on a 2D plane. And they're saying it might be up to three versus three. Giving you that old Marvel feel. I have not seen a trailer. I have only seen the confirmation and screenshots. But let me tell you this right now. I'm going to try to get some screenshots for y'all too, by the way. If there ever was a team 
that can pull off a high-end fucking fighting game. Let me assure you, it is the team of Guilty Gear. You know why? Because Guilty Gear, or Arc System Works, has only made one type of game since their inception. And that, sir, is fighting games. Now, let me go pull up some imagery for y'all real quick. There's only like two or three screenshots any fucking way. It won't be too hard. I'm just trying to picture how are the gameplay mechanics going to be like. Is flying a temporary thing or do you just automatically fly when someone hits you? Let's see. Arc. System. Works. Dragon Ball. Oh, it's already in here. Yeah, the official announcement has happened. Dragon Ball Fighters, early 2018. But is there a video, though? Nope. Oh, well, back to the images. Here it is. And it does, it looks, it looks like almost like a movie still. That's how fucking creepy good it is. Let me share this with you guys. All right, is it loading up? Uh, yeah, there it is. And I'm going to send you a link to the article, too. I'm going to read some of it off, but, you know, enough to know who made it, not to, like, fucking plagiarize or get close to it, I should say. Looks fucking beautiful, don't it? Mm-hmm. All right, now let me just read some of this real quick. This article is from usgamer.net by Mike Williams. Bandai Namco accidentally announced, accidental, huh? Accidentally announced today Dragon Ball Fighters, a brand new fighting game from Arc System Works. A Japanese press release was launched today, June 12th, dated June 12th. Oh, okay, it was an accident. But it was obtained, quote unquote, by Gematsu. DBF will utilize the same visual techniques that they used in Guilty Gear Xrd. For those of you that don't know, that's their 3D version of their 2D fighting game, which is will got a got a very outstanding following. Dragon Ball Fighters will be 3 versus 3 team battle system. Yes, that is beautiful. Oh man. According to the press release, Dragon Ball Fighters will offer the ultra high speed battles and flashy special moves that mark the Dragon Ball Z Super franchise. Well, say what you will about fucking Z, but Super Super needs to play catch up cuz Super the animation's a little bit cleaner, but fucking half the fights they got no way to them. I'm I'm not going to lie. It's not cuz the world isn't in danger it's because it feels like the animators don't know how to make shit like the old school people did. Okay, so yeah, uh, feelings? It sounds interesting, but like everything that deals with anime turning into something else, whether it be games or movies or live action movies, give it time, wait until we see more things, then make a good judgment. Like I said earlier, don't put all your eggs into one basket. Otherwise, you may just end up with a bunch of rotten eggs. You hear that, Wisdom Telford? Might want to remember that bit of wisdom you just got. This I Mike. apologize. I, I tune out ignorance when I hear it. Oh, well, then you must be deaf. I'm not. That'd be one of my friends. But no, I am. That looks, it looks really good. Um, being a Dragon Ball fan since, you know, the original Budokai came out. As far as the gaming world, I've been a Dragon Ball fan since, you know, birth. 
Dragon Ball's Dragon Ball, you know. It's one of the, you know, I hold that anime to a higher standard than I do most other animes just because it is Dragon Ball. So, so you know, that was like my original. But as far as this game goes, it looks really cool. Um, I can't wait to uh, can't wait to get my hands on it, honestly. I really want to see a trailer just because fucking I don't know how 3v3 is going to work, but I get the feeling since this was stated to be released on the 12th, we're going to see something real soon because that's practically E3 time. And even if Arc System Works isn't directly at E3 with the booth, they're under the Sega umbrella. So there's no, we could probably see them in fucking E3 at some point. My question is, is it playable or is it a fucking trailer? Um... Anybody else got any last little tidbits of news? Nope. Okay. Well, uh, I've got to go buy a new cell phone case because apparently mine is chipping, but at least my phone ain't fucked up. This has been another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast. I will catch you guys when I catch you guys.